Hello, my name is Tim Pierce. I'm the curator of collections here at the Carnegie Museum. I take care of the mollusk collection and I conduct research as well. And somebody has been asking me, if I take the shell off of my snail, will it become a slug? Well, that's an interesting question. Actually, um, slugs are related to snails. They look like sl snails without a shell, but in fact, most slugs do have a shell on the inside. Um, not all of them do, but most of them do. So, um, Snail biologists, we do think of slugs as being snails. The snails came first and they reduced the size of their shell and they internalized it and then they became slugs. So if you think about a snail, a snail has its guts up inside of its shell. So its internal organs um, and its uh, heart and its liver and all of those, its kidneys, its gonads, those are all up inside of the shell. And then what you see is the, the head foot the head and the foot, that's the part that sticks out of the shell. The snail is attached to its shell, so it cannot let go like a hermit crab can. The snail is attached, just like you are attached to your bones. You can't really take your bones out temporarily. Now, if you turn a snail into a slug, where do you put the guts? So the guts of a slug, uh, the slug actually hollows out its foot and it puts its guts inside of there. Uh, so that's what happens when you turn, go from a snail to being a slug. Now, there is this thing called a semi-slug. Here's a picture of a semi-slug, and you can see it's got a little bit of a hump on the back. So the hump on the back is where those internal organs are, and it has a little bit of a shell on the back there too. But the shell is way too small for the slug, semi-slug to pull back into. Here I'm picking up the shell of one of our semi-slugs from um, the uh, Great Smoky Mountains. So you this is a, a shell that it coils um, just a few times. And if you could see the animal, well, we'll show you a picture of the animal. Um, the, an the shell is way too small for the animal to pull back into. So this is called a semi-slug. And so it's got a hump on its back that have the um, internal organs in it. And um, there is, there's a group of semi-slugs from the Pacific Northwest, and they have the hump on the back with their internal organs in it. And their tail is muscular and they can actually thrash their tail from side to side and jump. They're known as the jumping slugs of the Pacific Northwest. I once told my friend I was going to the Olympics, the Olympic Mountain, I was going to the Olympics to see the jumping slugs. And she said, I didn't even know that was an Olympic event. So the, um, if you go from a, a snail to being a slug, it's not like a snail with its shell taken off. It's a snail that evolutionarily has been internalized. I have some, examples of slugs here. So these are some slugs in jars. Um, these are some banana slugs. They, they would normally be kind of olive colored or sometimes bright yellow. These live uh, out on the Pacific coast, only on the Pacific coast from uh, mid California up to Alaska. And they can get pretty big. They're bigger than my, bigger than my index finger. And then this is a, a leopard slug. This particular one has faded a lot because it's been in alcohol for how long? This was collected in September 1909. So that's more than 100 years old. And so it's faded a little bit. But you can still see these here in Pittsburgh. Um, they're not native to North America. They came from Europe. Uh, but this is an example of one of our larger slugs. So evolution works in small steps. If the snails came first and then they evolved into the slugs through the semi-slugs, Evolution has to work in small steps and, and every form all along the way has to be, it has to work. It has to be able to s stay alive and survive in its habitat. So let's take a look at the advantages and the disadvantages of shells. Snails have shells, slugs don't have shells. So the snail has a shell. It's got a shell that's there for protection from predators, protection from drying out, but it also has some disadvantages. The shell means that the snail has more requirement for calcium, and it also means that it's got this big thing on its back. It cannot fit into the tiny hidey holes. So that's two positives, two negatives. Let's look at the slug now. The slug has no shell for protection from drying out or, or protection from predators, but it has less need for calcium, and it also can fit into those tiny, tiny hidey holes. So two negatives, two positives. 
let's take a look at the semi-slug now. So the semi-slug has a shell. It's not very big. It, the, the snail cannot pull back into it, but it's still got a shell. So it's not really protected from the predators. It's not really protected from drying out. It still has a need for calcium, and it still has something that at least prevents it from getting into the really tiny hidey holes. So those are four negatives. How in the world do semi-slugs survive? How in this, in this transition from snail to slugs, how do the semi-slugs um, survive? And that is a mystery. It's still not, not known, but I did study that. And I found that most semi-slugs seem to have evolved on warm oceanic islands. So oceanic islands within about 30 degrees of the, of the equator. Where on oceanic islands? Well, doesn't it rain between two and four in the afternoon every day? So you don't have to worry about drying out. And islands, many, many islands don't have predators. And if you do need some calcium, there's sometimes some calcium that washes up with the, the corals and the shells that wash up on the beach. Um, hidey holes. Well, if you don't have predators and, and you don't have worry of desiccation drying out, then you don't really need a hidey hole. So where would it be better to be sluggish? On a warm tropical oceanic island. How about that? I'll sign me up. I'm ready to go.